Thanks, Leonard. Um, just wondering what, in your experience uh, with probabilistic programming in Python and PyMC3, have you have you run into limitations where you know there were things you wanted to do or problems you wanted to solve that you couldn't, or what what, what are the what are the boundaries of it? I mean, it seems to me like one of the main selling points of these kind of frameworks is is their flexibility, you know, allowing you to, you know go outside of sort of traditional inferential frameworks and structure your analyses in a way that, you know, get the most out of the data. Mm -hmm. um, do you feel like they, that this delivers on that promise or do you run into, uh, you know, boundaries or limitations that you haven't been able to overcome or? Um, yeah, just let me go back a little bit. Um, this is really small again. Um, yeah, so if, if we have a look at the system of ODEs, um, um, I was trying to, to use um, a variable um, contact rate beta. So um, I, so these, these were piecewise constant function I wanted to implement here. And so the idea was every time uh, the politics, um, I don't know, um, implemented a lockdown or, or um, yeah, made some kind of restrictions or whatever, that this, this uh, contact rate should, should be adjusted. And um, so using, using this in, in the ODE solver actually was, was pretty challenging and it, it got pretty messy. Um, so this worked better in NumPyro than in PyMC3, but this is not directly related to, to probabilistic programming in, in Python, but it's just um, the ODE solvers they are using. So I, I have the feeling that that uh, this is still some kind of niche application um, where you actually yeah, try to infer the, the parameters of, of an ODE system. Um, but yeah, I, I could manage to get around this, but this was just, yeah, was yeah, surprising how much how much effort I had to put into, into solving that. Um, but yeah, apart from that, so like, like I said at the beginning, I'm, I'm, I don't have a lot of statistics background, so I'm, I'm not really sure how, how far you can push things and, and I don't know if maybe the, this, the sampling algorithms, if, if they have strong limitations when things get, so when, I don't know, when, when, um, parameters are really strange distributions or something. Um, so yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the hybrid, um, you know, ODE system plus, you know, embedded in a stochastic uh, framework is, I agree, it's kind of a niche thing, but it doesn't seem to be a small niche these days. I mean, it seems like that keeps coming up in the context of epidemiological models. And at least in ecology, there are other models that are phrased in terms of systems of ODEs that get used in the same way where, you know, you have this sort of deterministic model, but you want to do some kind of inference with it. So yeah, I wonder, I mean, to me, that seems what being able to solve those kind of problems seems one of the main advantages of these probabilistic programming frameworks. Um, did, you, did you notice any differences um, in capability between PyMC3 and NumPyro and some of the different alternatives for this kind of problem? Do you, could you rate them and say which one was the best for, for that class of problems? Mm. Good question. So, um, so personally, I I think I like the the syntax of NumPyro more than than PyMC3. Um, but yeah, NumPyro is still pretty new, and um, so there are a lot less examples. And um, I, I think I, I think so. The 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 surrounding ecosystem is still not not uh, as large as PyMC3. That's why I actually chose PyMC3 um, for for the seminar today. Um, yeah, and, and yeah, regarding this this niche of ODEs, um, I, I have the feeling that this could actually also be um, be a problem of Python because I, I have the feeling that um, so for Julia, exa for example, um, the community which which actually applies Julia to solving some kind of ODEs or PDEs is much much larger than than in Python. Um, so yeah, may, maybe that's that's a reason why why you don't see this too often in hmm. at least in PyMC3 and, and NumPyro, um, and 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 Stan, I didn't have yeah a, a very detailed look into it. So it's it's written in C which I haven't used um, in some time, 
and it actually introduces some kind of yeah own programming language to to specify your models so that there's a lot i think the the learning curve is pretty steep for stan um so i can't really tell you a lot about that yeah i, I don't know so much for solving this kind of hybrid problem i know for you know bayesian analysis stan is pretty kind of pretty much the standard in the r community yeah. um and i think it's the only one of these kind of more general probabilistic programming frameworks that's available through R. Mm. Um, but I've heard it's slow relative to some of the alternatives in, in Python, like PyMC3 and, and NumPyRo. But um, I don't know if the extent to which it differs in capabilities, like you know, solving these sort of hybrid deterministic stochastic systems. But um, yeah, interesting. It, see, it seems like, um, from what I've heard, it seems like NumPyro is starting to build momentum, but yeah, maybe it's not there yet. Yeah, so NumPyro is actually um, created by Uber, Uber I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so Jax, so this, this uh, backend to which everything is compiled, um, this is actually from Google. So they're really big players. And um, so I'm, yeah, my prediction is that, that it's gonna, gonna um, yeah, grow pretty fast in, in the future. And just out of curiosity, what's your experience with, with Julia? You mentioned it in passing. Um, do you feel it's a more capable platform for, for this kind of this kind of work, these kinds of problems? Um, yeah, I, was, I was actually discussing with Uwe um, the last time I was at Casus about Julia. So I tried it for two times um, and that's already yeah, quite some time ago. And um, so I was I was expecting to have something like Python, but uh, in really fast. And um, so I I actually I wanted to solve some some stochastic differential equations, and uh, just for for importing all the necessary libraries for for solving this, it took I think I don't know 40, 50 seconds just to keep uh, to get things running. And uh, so this was really not I I, I wanted to do some explorative programming and see if, how, how things turn out and I just wanted to play around with the code and um, then always having, having to wait for 50 seconds. It's longer than, than most of the, of the stuff I wrote in, in compiled languages like C++ or so. Um, so that wasn't, yeah, I really didn't like that. But, but Uber said things have gotten a lot better and you can somehow pre-compile the dependencies now. Um, but yeah, I, I think one of the main selling points for Julia right now is, is the capability of solving all kinds of differential equations. And so this, this Turing, which is the, the probabilistic programming um, platform or framework in, in Julia, that also seemed pretty fleshed out already. So um, yeah, maybe we should give that a try. Sounds, sounds interesting. Mm -hmm. Also interesting that uh, 50 seconds is too long for you. I don't know if that says something about about the platform or about your uh, your patience levels, but <laughs> just kidding. Okay, good point. <laughs> just just kidding. Okay, I'll shut up now. Thank you for a nice nice talk. Anybody else have any uh, anything for Leonard? Any questions or things they want to discuss? Um, hi, Leonard. Thanks for the nice talk. Uh, I just wanted to ask you about the presentation. Like, how did you make a Jupiter presentation? Uh, it, it's a Jupyter extension. It's called Rise, and um, so yeah, it, you, it basically just adds a button to the Jupyter interface, and uh, as soon as you click on it, you get into this full screen, and um, yeah, you can do some, 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 yeah, whatever. You can you can paint on your on your screens. Um, so let me just. Can you still see my my screen? Yes. Okay. So yeah, this is this is basically the the Jupyter notebook, and um, yeah, this is this is the button which which um, yeah starts the slideshow, and you can yeah you can just set the slide types to to sub slide to to some notes. So I added some some more in depth information if if anyone if anyone wants to see the the notebook again, and uh, yeah, so it's it's not a lot of overhead if you if you want to create your notebook into a into a slideshow oh, that looks cool i'll check it out thanks uh 
hi Leonard. Thank you very much for your nice presentation. Uh, I just have um, some questions first about the slides that you uh, you're uh, seeing. Uh, you have considered beta and uh, gamma as four and one. That means that you have. Uh, but what I have usually seen is that uh, we say, for example, if recovery rate is for uh, 30 days, then we consider it as one over 30. And uh, but I or beta, for example, one over four. Uh, do you consider it because uh, for the format of uh, your definition, or uh, what was the reason that you consider exactly uh, four or one, not, uh, for example, zero point four? Uh, this is one question that I have. Another one is about PP helper that you uh, call it here. Could you? Please explain a little more about that and what is this and how it could help you uh, for which part exactly. Sorry, I think I missed it a little bit. Okay, regarding the, the first question. So this is a completely artificial example. Um, so I, I really hope that uh, there's no disease which which acts like this so that in five days the complete um, population is, uh, is infected. Um, and yeah, the, the units of these parameters is, uh, is per day. So it's, it's four per day and one per day. And that's why you often see the, the inverse. And uh, I, I didn't really get your second uh, question. So um, did you define PP helper by yourself? Is it? Uh, uh, okay, uh, yeah, yeah. So um, this is just, um, yeah, because um, the, the functions with which you can solve the, the ODEs it's yeah it needs a lot of parameters and 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 fine tuning and whatever and this was just too much to to show in in a screen presentation and so i just quickly put them into into yeah pp helper and um yeah i just wanted to hide you the i mean it's 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 nothing fancy it's just it's just a lot of code yeah sure uh, and uh for i you have uh dots that are represent it's distribution, something like this, yeah. And I cannot see how, uh, is it for observation, something? Uh, uh, I think it's uh, due to Y underline ops that you have defined, yeah? The orange dots in your plot. Yeah. Uh, um, oops, sorry. This is basically what you, uh, this this y ops yeah um, so um, I took the yeah the, the the artificial truth which we created by solving this um, this um, yeah the, the ODEs and uh, from that I I just um, yeah took the the log normal of uh, of this data as a mean with some errors here oh, yeah. and uh, so from this I, I get this distribution around this this curve here. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I have one small question. So first of all, um, thanks for the presentation. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, so did, did you try this uh, Pi MC3 uh, with any real data set because uh, the result you shown is basically generated synthetically. Mm. So did you try the real data and how does it work? If you can yeah, I, I was thinking of, of um, presenting that too, but um, just, I don't know, loading the, the data and preparing a thing, but it, it's just too much code. Um, so yeah, it, it works, but um, there's a lot of things you, you have to keep in mind. So um, some just distributions don't like it if you have uh, observations which are zero so if we if we try to to simulate um an epidemic or like and yeah the dynamics of, of the spreading of a disease on a, on a county level or something where we don't have a very large population and sometimes we we have observations of, of zero newly infected people um so there, there are a lot of things which, which you have to keep in mind and which yeah are not really obvious um why things don't work uh, at the mm -hmm. beginning if you're not in statistics expert, I guess. Um, but yeah, in, in principle, it works, yeah. Okay, uh, and the uh, next question is that, uh, 
how, how does the distribution of uh, likelihood and uh, maybe, maybe mainly likelihood uh, affects the result and all that in the case of real scenario real data like if you change uh, the likelihood distribution of the likelihood then how does it affect the result um yeah quite a lot actually um so um yeah so, uh, so some people say that uh, because this is a counting problem so you count the number of people uh, which would get infected you should use some kind of Poisson uh, distribution mm -hmm. um, but then other people say ah, Poisson is, is not really a good distribution because it only has one parameter and the the spreading of this distribution um, yeah is basically proportional to to the amount, amount of people you, you actually count um, and then there's there's um, yeah, extensions to this, which is the, the negative binomial distribution, uh, where you again have, have two parameters, I think, where you can um, yeah, have an influence on the amount of people which were counted and the, the spread of the distribution. Um, and this, this actually influences the, the results of, uh, of the parameters you predict uh, pretty, pretty much now. Okay, thanks. So if there are no more questions, shall we, shall we just uh, come to an end? Uh, Wildan, are you trying to talk? You're, you're muted. I just yeah, um, I just probably this technical question. So you told uh, Abhishek that when you download, you know, download, I mean, when you play with real data, uh, takes, takes, um, takes time more or just, uh, no, it's, it's just more code. And uh, so I, I don't know, I have maybe 20 lines of code or so per, per uh, screen or per, per slide. I see. And uh, so it's just, um, yeah, it's the, the basically the real estate of the, of the screen is, is very limited. So I just wondering, so when, when there is real data from that you, you use kind of uh, the, the source of from GitHub to download it first and then after that, uh, it will be analyzed by this this one, or how 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 normally you you work with uh, real data that I mean involves. Oops. Um, yeah, so I, I started uh, this work um, I don't know, maybe April last year, so um, be before I actually came to, came to Castles, and that I, I did the all the data handling by myself. Um, so once a day, I downloaded the data from the RKI. Um, did some some pre-processing scripts to to separate the data into the different counties, and um, the, yeah. So sometimes I wanted to have the actual the the case numbers. Sometimes I wanted to work with the with the seven day incidents because this is already a lot smoother. And uh, but after that, I can basically um, yeah plug plug this data into into this yeah progressive framework. Um, so yeah, last year I was still using another framework, which is not fully probabilistic, um, but yeah, maybe maybe similar enough. And um, yeah, from that I I then just uh, estimated the, the parameters of of this ODE system. Okay, thanks, Dan. Yeah, right, that's all for me as well. Thank you, Leonard. I think that's all, right? <laughs> no more questions. So, the furniture yeah. so, so the chair, so close it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah, thank you, Leonard, for a great talk. Thanks for taking the time to do this. Um, cool stuff. It is, yeah, it was, it was fun putting together. Yes. Nice.